Hello, today I'm looking at another problem from the internet. And the problem today is that you might be writing something like an expert advisor and you only want to run that at certain times of the day. So you want the user to be able to enter the start and finish times. And then inside the EA, you want to run comparisons against that. So that presents three issues to, to resolve. First is how do you adequately get an input? And what's the best way to do the input from the end user? Second is how do you validate that those inputs are genuine times and usable times? And the third is how do you actually do the comparison inside your EA? So let's move on and look at some code and see how we do all of that. The first method of doing the input is obviously to capture the hours and minutes separately. And I've got that showing here on screen. Start hour, start minute, end hour and end minute. This has the convenience for the programmer that they're very easy to test for valid times. You only need to check the hour is within the time range of 0 to 23 and the minute from 0 to 59. But you can see it's a little clumsy for the end user. So let's look at the next option. Here's the second option where I've captured the start time and the end time as actual date time values. You can see the icons changed here. This has the advantage that it's impossible to enter an invalid date and time. If I tried to enter something like 25 in the hours, it simply can't be done. So I know that any time entered here is valid. It has the disadvantage that it will always display a date. And I'm assuming that because you're going to be running this on a cycle, you're not capturing a specific date. You just want to run between certain times of the day. So that date component may be confusing to the end user. There's also a drop down, which seems convenient but you can only enter the date in that dropdown. You still have to come back to the editor to change the time. And now let's look at the third option. And this is the third option, the reliable old string. This shows the, just the time and it's convenient to enter. All I need to do is edit that. Of course, it creates more validation problems because as a string, I can enter anything here a completely invalid string or a time that's outside genuine time ranges. So this is a harder validation. Now I'm not saying which of these three you should use. I'm just offering up these the options and pointing out the advantages and disadvantages. And in the example code, I'm actually going to deal with all three of these. Now here I've set up an example script just to demonstrate and I've actually put in all three input types at the same time because I'm going to work on all of them at once. And before we go any further, I want to point out here where I've created the date time inputs, uh, I've used the format D1300. That's a perfectly valid time. If I compile this and you can see here, I get two warning messages, invalid date. It still compiles, but they're a warning message. And that's because I haven't entered a date in this string. I don't care about the date. I only want the time, but I'll get a warning message on that. And when I run this, and in fact, I'll just run it now so that you can see. Here in this start and end time, it has actually filled in the date that I compiled this program, which may or may not be relevant to you. Probably not because you'll be running this many times after it's compiled. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're using the date time input. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is to validate these inputs. So I'll work on the hour and minute input first. I'm going to create a separate function to do that validation because that way I can put these into a library of functions later. So my valid time is valid time taking the input of the hour and the minute. Uh, and I'm only using hours and minutes here. You may want to add seconds. It should be easy enough to add those. And this is a very easy comparison, as I said earlier. If the hour is less than zero or greater than 23, that's an error. If the minute is less than zero or greater than 59, then that's an error. Otherwise, I'm going to return true. The next validation I'm going to put in here is a function to validate the string input. Now in this string input, I'm obviously taking an input of type string. It's easy enough to convert that to a time, but the str to time function will convert any string to a time, even a completely invalid string. Uh, if you do use a completely invalid string, you'll get a default time. So this, this statement in itself won't validate that the time string entered is correct. 
what I'm doing then is converting that time back into a string using the time to str and using the time minutes format to get a test value and then I'm simply matching that test value to the time string passed in. So if you pass in a value of 13 colon 0 0 you should get back 13 colon 0 0. If you pass an invalid time string in then the time that comes back should be different and in that case if the test string is not the same as the time string passed in I'm just printing the error and returning false. Now there's an alternate condition where you may want to cope with seconds being entered in that time string. So let me just put in some code that would handle that if you want to use it. Now here's the alternate code in case you want to use seconds. You never quite know if the end user is going to enter just minutes or minutes and seconds. So the first thing I'm doing is the same test we had before. If test is the same as time string, then, or if it's not the same as the time string, then I'm going to do a second conversion and update test using the time seconds parameter. And if that still doesn't match, then I display a slightly different message saying it needs to be hours and minutes or hours, minutes and seconds. So I'm actually comparing twice, once against just the minutes format and once against the seconds format. So I'll put those into my script here. The validation steps. I'm not validating the date time input because that cannot be an invalid date and time. So the next thing, I want to convert those values into something that I can use later in my comparisons. Um, so I'm going to convert them all to a standard format and while it seems natural to convert everything to a date and time because these are dates and times, I'm going to convert them to integers because I'm only interested in the hours, minutes and seconds and it's going to be easier for me to compare those as an integer than as a date and time. Now to do this I'm creating yet another set of library functions which I'm calling day seconds uh, and given that I've got three different types of input one of these will take an hour, minute and an optional second which I'm setting to zero if it's not passed in. The other will take a string and the other will take a date time format. Let me scroll this across a little so we can see them. The format taking hour and minute is the easiest. All I do is multiply hours by 3600, add that to minutes by 60 and add the seconds. So I'm just coming up with the number of seconds in the day or the number of seconds in that by that time of the day. The next one to look at is the date time format. And here I'm doing the same thing. I'm converting the date time passed in using the time hour, the time minute and the time seconds functions to get the hour, minute and time values and then I'm passing that back to the day seconds function to get an integer. And the third format, the string format, now I've already validated the string so I know that it's a valid time before I call this and I'm simply using string to time to convert that into a date time passing that to day seconds which will call this format that takes a date time which will in turn call this format which will return an integer. So those three functions together I would put them into a standard library to convert hours, minutes and seconds to a, an integer. And then I want to use those in my code. So in here I'm going to use all three of these because I've taken three different types of input and I want to run a single comparison of them. So all three formats, hours and minutes, date, time and string. And the last thing I want to do then is to run the comparison of these to demonstrate how to do the comparison. That's the probably the most important part of this. Now to do the comparisons I need to have a standard library function again that will let me determine if the current date and time or any other date and time passing in could be the start date and time of a particular bar if that is inside the range specified by these start and end times. So to do that I have a standard function in time range. I'm passing in a date time formatted test time and a start time and end time. First thing I do is I convert that input date time into seconds using the day seconds function. Then I'm doing two comparisons because I need to handle situations where the start time is before the end time but also 
If you're running across midnight, because time is continuous, start time could be later than end time. So the first test is a simple one. If the time passed in is greater than or equal to the start time and less than or equal to the end time, then that's valid. The second test, if the start time is greater than the end time, then I need to know if the time passed in is greater than or equal to the start time or less than or equal to the end time. So that function will simply tell me if this test time is in between these two times of day. Now I want to run this test three times inside this script once for each of these pairs of times. So rather than call the in time range and handle it because I want to also print some messages, I'm just going to create a little utility function here just for this script. So let me pass that. I'm using, going to call this function called compare and I'm going to in a moment um, add in this input test time which will add during the startup of the script. So I'm going to call that three times and let me now just, and here's the compare function, taking the same three arguments. And then I'm simply using the in time range function with these three arguments. And all I'm doing then is printing a formatted string uh, saying that the input time, and let me reformat these so they're a little easier for you to see. So percent %s will be the time to string value of the input test time formatted in date and seconds. The second argument in the range from will be the start time formatted in seconds. And the third argument will be the end time formatted in seconds. And the same if, the, if this is not in time range, I'm just displaying it's outside the range And I'm using the same three values passed in here. And then if we go to top of screen and I'll put in an input for this input test time. And here I'm going to input a simple date and time value. Um, this macro underscore underscore date time underscore underscore gives me the date and time that this or this script was compiled. So if I run this now, and we'll see what that does. Now here in the inputs, I'll just use the default values. All three of these time ranges are from 13 to 15. My current time here is showing as 11.25. If I run this, all of these should show an error or should show outside the range. And we can see the results here. 11.25 is outside the range. Let me run it again. This time I'll change this time to make it between 13 and 15. And now the results as expected, 13.25 is inside the range. Let me run one more test to show what happens if we span midnight. So in this case, I'm going to change this time to 16. So for the first pair, I'm running from 1600 to 1500, so I'll be spanning midnight. I'll leave the second set as 13 to 15, and I'll make the string values 10 to 12. And then I'll change my input time to 12.25. Now the first test should pass because I'm running across midnight and 12.25 is between 16 and 15 the next day. The second test will fail because it's outside the range 13 to 15 and the third test should fail because it's outside the range 10 to 12. And you can see there, 12.25 is in the range from 16 to 15 it's outside the other two ranges. So in summary, I've created three library functions that I keep in a standard include file. I have the isValidTime functions, there we go, uh, one taking hours and minutes, and optionally you could add seconds to this, and the other taking 
a time string. Then I've also created the day second functions which convert a date time or an hour minute second into seconds of a day. And then I have the in time range function which compares an input test time to those integers of start and end time. Hope this is useful to you and thank you for watching.